Today is Thursday, June the 20th. We hope you're having a great day, enjoying the week. It's been an awesome week around here with VBS going on. We love seeing what God is doing in the lives of young people and just learning to dive deeper into friendship with God. Uh, you have tonight and you have tomorrow to still join us for VBS if you've not joined in and jumped in yet. So bring your kids from 6 to 8 o'clock. Uh, but as always, we're going through this series, learning about what do we need from Jesus. Ralph had an awesome message he brought on Saturday and Sunday, and I hope you've been diving into that and really digging in deeper to God's Word with some people in your life. First question, have you ever been used by someone as a means to an end? How did that feel? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can I tell a story here? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, so... Uh, Grace and I, when we lived in Ohio, right, actually not very long, maybe within the year or so that we moved, ended up moving here to Carl Junction, uh, we had a next door neighbor who shall remain nameless at this moment. Uh, next door neighbor had moved into a house. The house had been empty for uh, the entire time we'd lived there. So about eight years, this house had been empty. A uh, lady had moved in with five daughters, uh, ranging from early elementary up to teenagers. Uh, five daughters, they all moved in. And they're living in this house together, all all six uh, ladies here living there. And they moved in. We got to know them a little bit. They weren't super friendly, but we were trying to be good neighbors. And, and then uh, one night I got a knock on our door because the, the sewer had backed up in their house. Mm -hmm. uh, sewage, and, and it was it was bad, y'all, in the basement. It was it was a bad thing. Well, we had uh, she had somebody come out. She asked permission to dig our yard up, so they dug up the things, and they found out that the two houses, when they had been built back in the 1920s or so, the two houses didn't have uh, individual sewer lines. They actually came out, came together, and went together to the road. It's it just a weird way to do it, uh, the way it was built. Well, when we had bought our house, our house, uh, we paid the county. Uh, they came out, and because that's the way it worked there, and they ran a new line because our sewer line was all broken, and so they ran a new line for us to the road. But they did not hook our house up to it. And so it was running into where the pipe used to be, ending in the ground, and then backing up that pipe there. It was bad, guys. It was bad. Um, she was in, in bad shape. She was uh, desperate, didn't have a lot of money, and, and Grace and I were like, we're talking to her, and she's, you know, we're talking about Jesus and all these things, invited her to church. I'm like, I'm like, hey, can we help pay for this for you? Uh, we feel for you. So we actually paid a significant amount of money toward it. And um, then uh, it just got really bad afterward. Um, uh, found out that there was not really a friendship there. And um, some other things happened later on that she got really, really mean about. And and uh, we're like, what? I thought we were close. And we determined finally she just wanted our money was what it was and it, it feels bad it feels yeah. it feels rotten um, is what happens especially in a situation like that where it's not, yeah. like sometimes you get used by people and it's like a short term like yeah. they showed up popped in popped out of your life where that one was obviously a season right yeah. and then there was the, the better part of a year following that just that it was just it was it was not a good neighbor situation it was and it, it just reminded us every day we saw her that this is all she wanted from us yeah. and it, it stinks. No one likes being used, but, but that, I think we all get used. It happens. Sadly, it happens in the church, too. Sometimes yeah. we, it might not be money. It might be something else, uh, uh, opening to a relationship or to a status thing. Uh, we do this to each other all the time, and it's a human trait that should not exist in the kingdom of God. And, I mean, that's why Jesus, uh, Jesus says that you shouldn't think of yourself more highly than you're at. Yeah. Uh, Paul even said it, and he said you should take the attitude of the servant, right? Yeah. That in all your all your relationships, think of the other person better than yourself. Yeah. And so that way, we cannot be like this. So that way, we don't use and abuse mm -hmm. people. That that way, we live like Jesus. Yes. Second question: What comes to mind when you think of the word loyal? Who is the most po loyal person to you? Hmm. Well, I think of loyal. It's a it's a picture of an animal, uh, a golden retriever. Hmm. Uh, comes to mind. I mean, a golden retriever. Uh, if you've ever had one, I've not. Have you had one before? Not a golden retriever. I've been. No, I've had dogs, but not golden yeah. retrievers. Um, I've had friends that have, and it's amazing. The, these animals, uh, you can you can step on their foot or stomp on their tail, and they will jump and yelp and spin around, and then they'll kind of go away and they'll come back real quickly. And those eyes, it's almost like they're saying, "I am so sorry, I was under your foot." Um, and they are right there. You leave the room, they follow you. It's just they're yeah. right there. They're right there to help you, to be there for you, to cheerlead for you. Uh, not like a cat, 
because cats don't forgive you. Cats are un unforgiving. Cats do not care. Cats do not care. You are there for their benefit. They're not um, loyal. But I think, I mean, I think of loyal, I think of someone who, it, it's two-sided for me. And I think my definition of loyalty has changed as I've gotten older. Um, because it would have been someone who's just there for you, sticks by you. I've come to determine, though, that loyalty is those things, but it's also someone who's willing to be truthful with you, right? Mm -hmm. Stick with you, but true loyalty is willing to tell you stuff you don't even like sometimes, but will still stick with you. Mm -hmm. So, like, my spouse, and I think I think you would say the same thing with Grace, like, awesome, loyal, uh, but also is willing to say, hey, you're wrong. I don't like hearing that sometimes, but because they love me, the loyalty there and doing that, same thing, I think of my parents. My parents are in my life. They help me with a lot of things. I could call them at a moment's notice, and my parents or even my in-laws, they would drop everything to come help me. That's loyalty, but they're also willing to say the hard things mm -hmm. because they're loyal, because they love me. Yeah. I have a friend who uh, just just in the last couple of years had a really, really bad year um, on every front, family and, and job and all these things, and, and it would be really easy for this friend just to kind of walk away, but, but, but this individual had other friends that came alongside and just said no you can it'll be okay i don't believe the lies i don't believe the rumors they're not true we know you we're here and in the end things are working out really well but it takes it takes a community to do that sometimes yeah and i think that's where you see loyalty the most is what who sticks yeah. with you through the fire yeah and walks with you through it whom are you most loyal to how do you demonstrate that loyalty well, off the top of my head, I want to say Jesus, right? <laughs> like, I want to say the Jesus answer. Jesus is the person I'm the most loyal to. Um, I don't think I am as much as I want to be sometimes. Yeah. Um, I obviously, like Sunday school, Jesus is the answer and um, to every question all the time. But if we were to remove Jesus from the, the possibility of answers, right? Let's talk human people here, people that are uh, physically around us. Yep. Who would it be? Oh, honestly, my family. It starts there. And yeah. and selfishly, it's not even everyone in my family. Like, it's certain people in my family. I don't mean that in a mean way, but just, it's like my mom and my dad, some of my siblings, and if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm not that, I'm not loyal to them, but like, there's other, there's certain people in my life, though, that I will drop everything. And I think that's where I come to determination. What, who am I willing to drop everything for? And run out the door to help. Shows my loyalty. Yeah, I tend, I think this is, I think this is an honest assessment of myself. I tend to be a very loyal person to people around me. I, I quickly will step to defend friends and family and, and I, I'm, I think loyal in that way. Um, so for me, I mean, the, the, there's a church around me and you've heard me say before, I believe our church is a family. Mm -hmm. Our staff within that is a family and, and I will show up for our staff. I will lay on the line for our staff um, whenever because they're my family. Uh, we were Oikos, that's family, right? My extended family. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to who is the most right there, it's my wife and my son, right? And I'll tell you this, they know this. It's my wife and my son, but my wife always comes first, mm -hmm. right? And he knows that. He, he reminds me. So he's like, oh, yeah, I'm second. And I say, yes, son, you are. Um, yes, son, you are. Um, the day I married my wife, I pledged to be most loyal to her above all other human beings on the earth yep. on that day. And I meant it. Yep. And I think sometimes it's hard. I mean, it's hard to be, not just because, but like, especially in church situations, because people will say, oh, why are you choosing her over me? It's like, because I said I do to that person, right? And I made a, I made a commitment not only before her, but to God that I would be loyal to her. Yeah, and it's actually, sometimes, you know, uh, people question, like, your, but your kids are first. It's always the kids, and I would actually say that's not correct. That's untrue, and it should not be that way. Yep. And families... Um, <laughs> You do your children a disservice if you make your kids first over your spouse. You use yep. them a disservice. Uh, it's not the way it's supposed to be. Uh, I think biblically, that's not the way it is. Yep. And I've seen so many families, moms and dads, that make the kids first. It's all about the kids, their events, their school, their sports, their games, their friends. It's all the kids that when the kids leave the home, because they will, they will fly the nest. When that happens, mom and dad don't even know each other anymore and yep. marriage is over. Yep. Spouse husband wife comes first yeah. i'm just thinking i'm just thinking about some of the people today um we do these meals uh every couple times a month here in the church and we were celebrating anniversaries and how many people had 54 58 uh 64 year is and i think if you were to talk to all of them um because i've been in a, a, enough of their lives to know that they put 
each other above all other things. That's why they still have a friendship. Yeah. Um, that's why they still are fighting for each other because that's just what they've done since the beginning. And it's good for kids to learn it is. that they're not the most important thing. It is. And that, that there is there is someone that you can strive for. And I think it teaches us also as kids. Like when I was a kid, my dad did that. Mm-hmm. It reminded me of there's a priority and same with God, right? Like we prioritize God above all things. And then when I became a husband, I prioritized my wife right under Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And that, that, was, that was the deciding factor for things. Yeah. Yeah, that's how we raised our son. You know, he's 19 right now, and he uh, he and I have a great relationship. Uh, but he knows from my mouth he is to protect his mother at all costs. <laughs> but he also knows that one day when he gets married, that changes. Yep. It it, it changes to his wife, and that will be different. Um, I uh, this is quickly becoming a marriage talk, and that's okay. Um, it's just the so, easiest example. Yeah, I think. you talked about the meal we had earlier, right? Yeah. I was in there too. And um, how long have you and Amanda been married? Twelve years. Twelve years. Uh, Grace and I are twenty-two years, so a little little beyond that. Um, sometimes, if you've been twelve years or twenty-two, it can feel like it's been a long time. <laughs> and you're like, I'm starting to figure things out. I know how to do this. I can give marriage advice and do all that. Well, then you sit in a room with people married for 54, 58 years. And you know nothing. And you realize how little <laughs> you know. Um, I want to tell you this. If if you're married, um, or if you're getting married, or if you're dating, or if you thought, I might want to be married someday, one of the best things you can do is find a couple that has been married for 50 plus years. Yeah. And just say, can I, can I buy you lunch? Yeah. And let me ask you some questions. And just pick their brain a little bit, because you'll find some wisdom, I think, buried uh, within those 50-plus years of things. Well, this is not, again, since we're tangenting about things, um, because, again, I w- we want to help you. We want to help you take better steps for your family. If you're listening to this or watching this right now, and you're like, man, I am that parent, and so is my husband or my my wife, that we put our kids above even us, mm. and I don't know how to, where to start. I don't know where to change. Message us. We're not perfect at it. We're getting better at it all the time. I think you're a little further along in it than I am. Uh, obviously, having a 19-year-old, and I have an 8-year-old, but we are, we are trying to figure this out all the time, how to do these things. Mm-hmm. We're not perfect at it, but we'd love to come alongside you and help you find next steps. So 10 years from now, you can look back and say, hey, we made some hard decisions, but it was worth it. We want, we want to get, because right now is not the end. You want to get to the end and finish well, right? The end of your life and finish well. I want to have, I've now watched um, out of four grandparents, uh, grandpa, grandma, grandpa, grandma, three of them pass away. And the sweetest moments and memories I have, not only just growing up and listening to talk about marriage stuff, was the end. In hospital rooms. Watching them just smile and talk about the joy they're going to have. Hey, it's just it's just goodbye for now. Because they chose to do some hard things. They didn't have it easy. They had some rough stuff. I mean, to be married for 50 plus years, there's going to be some bumps along the way they have to figure out. But they will tell you over and over again, and any old people who have been married longer than 40 years will tell you, because it's the same story here over and over and again. We chose to make hard choices on behalf of each other. For, for our marriage, for one another, to invest in each other so we can have a long-term thing, a legacy to pass on yeah. to our kids and our grandkids. And we want that for you. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Next question. Um, do you seek, thank you, I was like, I think I already asked that question. Do you <laughs> seek Jesus for who he is or for what you can get out of him? Are there areas in your spiritual life where you're focused more on yourself than God? Short answer, seasons of my life. I do. I focus on Kenan more than Jesus. And this is where you need people. If you're walking a Jesus life alone because you're tired of God's people, you're missing out. Because there's a reason why God says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I need people like Adam in my life to say, hey, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> well, and I'll be like, what do you mean? It's like, well, you're following Jesus like this, and it kind of seems like it's all about Kenan. Yeah. And we talked about loyalty uh, last week. And in that loyalty, and oh, not last week, earlier. I'm getting all my things confused. I'm <laughs> sorry. We're getting, we do these videos ahead of time. And so sometimes things run in my head. Anyways, we were talking about loyalty earlier. And one of the things that I think part of that loyalty comes from showing up and saying, hey, you are thinking of yourself more than God. And as a Christian, as someone who claims to follow Jesus, you're actually accountable to other Jesus followers, the people you've let in your life. And because of that, because I chose to say yes to Jesus and he's the king, he's the number one authority, 
it means that I've also opened up my relationship for Adam to walk in and say, what are you doing? Not in a mean way, not in a condescending way, but a, you, God has better for you. And because of that, I want to help you get back on the right path. Yeah. Which goes all the way back to what we said a few weeks ago. Uh, we need a Paul, a Barnabas, and Timothy. Yep. Uh, somebody that can invest in us, that we invest in too, that encourage us along the way too. And yep. um, when we do that, we have a much better chance of pursuing Jesus for who he is rather than what we get. Yeah. If you have more questions or comments about this, I know we're running out of time. Uh, we could talk about this stuff for days and days and days. Email us. Message us. We want to help you. We want you to learn to love Jesus better. We want you to learn to be obedient to him better. Because it's going to take a lifetime. But you can do it. So, But you have to also be real and honest enough to say, this is where I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. And so message us. Reach out to us. Let us help you. I'm excited for this weekend. Saturday and Sunday, Chase Hogan, yep. our student minister, is preaching. If you, if you <coughs> thought a couple of weeks ago, he and I preached, Chase and I preached together, and he's a lot of fun. Yeah. He'll be in John chapter 9 and talking about, can Jesus help me see clearly? And I, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say this weekend, uh, just because we do. We want to see Jesus clearly. Yeah. He has a unique voice, uh, uh, a younger guy looking at this, and he's starting out trying to follow this. And so you're going to want to hear the passion he has for the kingdom of God. Yeah. Saturday, 6 o'clock at North Heights. Sunday morning, 8, 9.30 or 11. Join us live at 9.30. But make sure you prioritize coming together and joining together. Whether it's digitally or in person, get together with God's people. Yeah. Church, as always, until we see each other again, you were sent. Have a great day. <laughs>